I was just at a meeting in Rome uh, the other day where uh, Ho Seon Lee, who's the chairman of IPCC, talked about the, the report they just brought out on the how do we get to keep warming less than 1.5. And rightly, they point out that the difference between 1.5 and 2 doesn't seem very much, but actually it's very crucial in mm. terms of a lot of processes relating to crop failures and so on. And so... 1.5 would be very desirable, but um, if we're going to get to it, we have to reduce carbon emissions down to zero by 2050, starting now. And everything is <laughs> still rising, and yet the IPCC envisages we suddenly all come to our senses and everything starts falling. Mm. It's not going to. Mm. The, the human race is, is morally weak. It, it knows what needs to be done, but it won't do it. So let's do something which we are morally capable of technology would enable us to take carbon out of the atmosphere we can we can reduce the impact of of global warming by taking it out of the atmosphere and that's the only way we're going to stop the rise mm. in sea in 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 co2 from becoming disastrous so on that thought there's a there's a and I was going to ask you about Paul Beckwith, who's another Canadian paleoclimatologist, I believe. Mm, yes. And he, I know he's talked a lot about, because he's on the same, sort of obviously on the same lines, his, he seems to be looking towards uh, the combined effects of stratospheric um, uh, in the atmospheric mm. modification and ocean fertilisation, which mm. I've looked at and there appear to be reasons why that might not be such a great idea. Mm. Um, so that's, that, those are sort of modifications and then you're talking about directly taking carbon from the air, presumably, which is this yes. direct air mm. capture. Yes, geoengineering is, is a kind of a sticking plaster because you can, you can reduce the temperature rise successfully, but you're not dealing with the carbon dioxide content. So other things go on happening which are nasty, like uh, acidification of the ocean, mm. which would ultimately lead to the loss of all marine life. And I think to save us, we have to get rid of CO2. That's the villain of, the whole villain of, of the piece yes. is the CO2. And if, if that's what's causing the, the effect, then, and and we're, we're masters of science and technology, which we supposedly are, we can get rid of it. We know what to do. We know, we know it's a chemi chemical method. We just have to in invent better, more efficient chemical systems that we can we can suck out the CO2 with. And, and, and there is a company that's, that's I, I believe, I, will, I looked at Climeworks the other yes, week in a video, and you, you've, you've been aware of them as well. Well, yes, there's, there's three, at the moment, three companies with, with pilot plants. Climeworks is, is probably the most successful so far. They, it's Swiss, but it's, they've got their pilot plant in Iceland, and the particular rocks you get in, in, in Iceland um, react with CO2 to give you a solid material. So mm. you can get rid of the CO2 by pumping it down into these rocks. Uh, the, the other companies, which one of them is in California and one is in British Columbia, they, they're doing more complex things involving co-production of, of energy from uh, solar uh, and then you're using that energy to combine you're getting you're stripping off the co2 but you're combining it with with hydrogen which you've you've produced by it from uh, from the solar power and the hydrogen plus the co2 together are giving you a, a variety of, of compounds some of which have fuel potential so you can actually produce fuel out of co2 yeah. It needs a much bigger effort. You need to have a hundred companies, or you need to have a yes. hundred times as much money spent to, to yeah. bring this bring this on. Something I haven't really covered in my videos, and I'm very interested to do so and get your slant as well, is the effect on the on the I think what they call the ocean conveyor belt or the thermohaline yes. circulation, yes. and that, as I understand it, a little bit is it's it's starting to slow down as well as a result of all mm. all, all of the changes. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, the thermohaline circulation is, is a, a separate circulation from the familiar pattern of currents which are driven by the wind, whereas this circulation is driven by differences in temperature and salinity, like some parts of the world have a large amount of rainfall that dilutes the surface water, others have, get, have a lot of evaporation so that, that 
makes the surface water more saline so those patterns of heating and cooling and, and adding water and taking water away produce a circulation it's called a conveyor belt because you, you, you see the surface part of it spreading all over the world and then there's a few places where the surface water sinks down into the deep ocean and then there's a deep circulation and then there's other places where you have upwelling so the, there's cogwheels like, mm. a, like a conveyor belt and one of the cogwheels that's, that's stopped working is in the Arctic. Uh, this is the, in the Greenland Sea. There was a place which I studied a lot because uh, I was running an EU project there um, called the Odden Ice Tongue. It's, it's, a, it's a, a region of sea ice to the east of Greenland where uh, you have ice growing in a, away from the coast uh, in a place where there's a lot of wave action. So in the winter, the wave action breaks the ice up so it grows more rapidly and as it grows rapidly it um, it, it rejects salt because sea ice has got less salt in it than water mm. so so it's rejecting salt so you're getting a rain of salt and the seawater at the surface is getting more dense and it reaches a critical point where it sinks so in that very restricted region you've got sinking going on and it sinks as a, a quite a narrow um, cylinder which is rotating so it's, it is just like a plug hole in right. the bath it's going down it goes down two and a half thousand meters it goes down wow. right close to the seabed and then spreads out at depth and that's what helps drive it and, and certainly drives the Atlantic part of it except it's not sinking anymore of ah. so that's slowing it down it, it's not so much water coming up in that circulation the trouble is there isn't any less heat involved the, the the extra heat in the planet is there and if it's not coming up to Europe it's staying in the Gulf of Mexico so what you're getting is more rapid warming of the surface water in the Gulf of Mexico and that gives you in, intent, more intensive hurricanes hurricanes are now are, are far more damaging than they used to be because the surface water is warmer Yes. so we we now know that a vital part of the cogwheel has stopped working and so there's an, this is yet another yeah, yet another no, concern. No, no. There's, a, there's another technology which is, seems to be very much in its infancy which is ocean thermal energy conversion, OTEC, mm, you're yes. aware of that one. Mm, mm. Um, and there's a chap in America that I'm, I've been in contact with who's developing a version of it called ocean, what he calls ocean mechanical thermal energy conversion funnily enough in the Gulf of Mexico and his concept is to use the differential of heat and cold in, in that part of the, the, the waters mm. to run a heat engine oh, yeah. with anhydrous yeah. ammonia to, to, to run that round a system over, over turbines which then gives a electrical flow. I think the problem with OTEC is that most of the energy you get from that heat engine goes to running the pumps that actually yes, pump the, yes, the, yeah. the, uh, yeah. the ammonia around the system but with his system he's using the flow of the Gulf Stream which he says is six miles an hour to drive a, a tidal turbine which then powers the system. Mm. Have you something you've heard of OTEC presumably and does it strike you as a, a, a feasible proposition um, or is it a bit? Very much yes it sounds really exciting I mean I've heard of OTEC and, and uh, I've been involved with design of uh, a, a version of that called Ice Tech okay. <laughs> which is where you you tow if you, you try to tow an iceberg uh, into a, a, a lot into a, a bay somewhere right. and you you use the, the water from the iceberg for for irrig irrigation but you uh. can use use the iceberg for power as well because you do you run an OTEC uh, generator between offshore water which is warm and meltwater from the iceberg which is cold so you operate the the ammonia turbine between the offshore water and the iceberg right. water so that hasn't been ever implemented but it's it's a design which looks like it would work and you you get as much uh, value from the from the electricity as you do from the water yes um, but this sounds even more interesting because y it's an OTEC scheme but but the prob you're, you're you're solving the problem of loss of energy in the pumps. Yes. I think it's quite exciting, I must yes. admit, but I was interested to hear your... Yeah, your, it's, it's your exciting and it's surprising that nobody's thought of that before. It, so in, that, indeed, yeah. and, and mm. yeah, um, so we, we'll, we'll watch this space, we'll see how mm. that pans out, I'll, mm. I'll keep you posted.